Time for a head-to-head -head on the bike show. This time with two very different bikes, but yet, under the skin, very much the same. So let's get the differences out of the way. The NC700 obviously styled like a motorcycle, the Integra like a maxi scooter. The one thing that most closely links these two machines is the DCT gearbox dual clutch transmission, which we saw a few years ago on the VFR 1200. Exactly the same system on both bikes. Look, no clutch. On this bike, that is the rear brake. Enough talking, let me go do some riding. The one is styled like a motorbike, one like a scooter. Let's see what the difference is. The NC700 is Honda's attempt to build the ultimate commuter. A bike that is practical, affordable and fuel efficient, yet still manages to be good looking, well made and fun on a weekend. Safety is also a major feature and so there's combined ABS braking via a single disc, front and rear. As for practicality, well, what other bike do you know of that can store a full face helmet? No clutch lever, but a button for changing up the gears. A handbrake, which is so, so important on an automatic. And then the best bit, the controls for the dual clutch transmission, with the two modes being sport and drive. The NC700 is a good looking commuter, and the Integra isn't bad looking either, for a bike that thinks it's a scooter. Exactly the same engine and chassis is hidden away under all the plastic, and the DCT is the same too. Wheels, brakes, swing arm, controls and instrumentation are all pretty much identical. Though somewhat surprisingly, the Integra only has storage space for a phone and some spare gloves. Although essentially the same bike, the Integra looks more substantial, an impression reinforced by the extra weight it is carrying. With the same price, choosing between these two models is going to come down to which is the better ride and which one you prefer the look of. Clinton is off on the Integra first, having decided that he will ride both bikes with the DCT set in the sport mode. This allows the engine to rev as high as possible before selecting the next gear. And it will change down through the gears much more early than in drive mode, letting the motor work in its most powerful range for as long as possible. Full-size motorcycle wheels and the fact that it's really a motorbike and not a scooter mean that the Integra handles as well or better than any other maxi scooter on the market today. Bodywork will eventually touch down, but this is a track, remember, so if you're leaning this far on the road, you should probably think about backing off a bit or at least book yourself a bed in your favourite hospital. On to the NC700 now for a lap time that, in theory at least, should be pretty close to the Integra's. As well as using the sport mode on each bike, Clinton decides to ride both like he's a commuter, so no hanging off, no knee down, just a smooth, traditional riding style. There's no denying that Clinton looks more comfortable on the NC, but he's running out of ground clearance quicker than he did on the Integra. The foot pegs are going down, but this may just be down to him going that little bit faster on this model. The gearbox handles the demands of the track easily, though as you can see, the down changes are sometimes severe enough to upset the whole bike. Difficult to tell from the sidelines, but Clinton was pretty sure he knew the score from his seat. The NC700 felt noticeably quicker. Was he right? A 110.3 for the Integra and, yes, the NC is over two seconds ahead. Arriving here this morning, I thought the Integra was going to be the bike that I was going to prefer, as they're exactly the same and it's a scooter. But after spending the day on them, the NC700 actually caught my fancy. Three things, it's slightly cheaper, it's got storage space, and truthfully, for commuting, I actually think their bike riding position is that little bit better. There you have it. My choice for commuting is the NC700, which I quite frankly think could be the best commuting bike in the world.